Well, ladies and gentlemen, almost a year to the date, my next guest taking over the Mindless Org podcast for the Scream Break Takeover is no stranger to Scream Break at all. You know her. You know you love them. M, how you doing? I am doing really, really well. I'm in UC San. I'm in San Diego. I'm at my college, UC San Diego. I'm in my dorm. It's all decorated. Luckily, um, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Oh, I mean, a lot has happened since we talked to you last year. Um, I, I remember we got you on the show to talk about Scream Break, um, yeah. and we talked about your your year at um, at Fright Fest, uh, and a lot has happened for you since. Screen Break 2023. Now we're in Screen Break 2024, um, and it's been a very exciting year for not only, um, you know, your. Uh, I mean, you're the you're the you're the manager, so I would say all your all your beautiful talents um, out there. Uh, it, it's been a very busy. I imagine for you, scheduling all this stuff has been busy for for scheduling for Margo. I mean, Margo is 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 very busy throughout the year now, and and yeah, I mean, so talk about. From when we last left off, we, I mean, now we pick up things again. Midsummer Scream. I mean, twenty twenty three. That's that's a huge opportunity right there. Tell me, tell me about that experience. Yeah. Um. So, I mentioned last time. I at at the time that Scream Break rolled around, I didn't know much about the haunt world. I know a lot more now, <laughs> but I didn't know much about it. Um. And so I didn't even know what Midsummer Scream was. <laughs> Um, I had heard it tossed around. Like I heard Fright Fest people going like, oh yeah, I went to Midsummer Scream. And I'm like, I don't exactly know what that is. Um, so I don't even remember when Midsummer Scream was. It was like, August, like it was like, wait, what? July? Uh, end of July, I think last year. Yeah. yeah. So beginning of July, um, I was messaged. And they're like, hey, can you let Margo know that we need Margo? And I was like, oh, yeah, what's up? And they're like, well, Midsummer Scream. And I went, oh, that's I I kept you're like what's that but yeah sure yeah <laughs> I knew it was a big thing because um someone who who um Lorraine Lorraine um th this was when I was working so we had an event over uh the summer called Flavors of the World and I was a host and I had gotten this news while I was at Flavors of the World and I was just sort of staring at my phone <laughs> um and someone was like you know that's like a that's like a huge honor right and I was like it looks like it. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> um, and it all happened really, really fast. Midsummer Scream was. Oh, that was so it was it was so cool. I'm not even going to lie. It was so cool. Like, first of all, my dad made me a jacket for Midsummer Scream. And it's the jacket I'm wearing right now. It has yes. Margo's face on the back. Yeah, he... I I love. By the way, she she showed me the jacket prior to going on the air. It is such a, a an awesome. I know you you talked about um how much you know your parents are a huge support about with everything you do. There it is, right there, uh, <laughs> yeah. and that further proves the support that they they continue to give you with your journey um in the in the career path you are choosing and everything. But I mean, I, I think that's awesome to have you know a jacket with with margo's face on it you know i mean that that's hilarious. my that's awesome. dad my dad somehow found a picture of margo and he edited it to say margo rita he spelled it correctly <laughs> and he like he heard i was going to Minnesota scream and like two days later he's like hey i made you a jacket and i went when did you find the time how did you do this <laughs> okay um and I, I wore it every morning going into Six Legs to get the makeup for oh, Miss Scream. I mean, yeah. you know, here on the Nights of Horror, we've always said that uh, the best comparison for Midsummer Scream, for no one, anyone that doesn't know what it is, um, the best way to compare Midsummer Scream is to like San Diego Comic Con. Yes. Uh, it is the Comic Con of horror and haunt, and mm -hmm. everyone's there to announce things. Everyone's there to have a good time, celebrate that almost, we're almost there to Halloween. We just need to get past this last month of the summer and. It's Halloween time, um, so yeah. I, yeah, I can imagine for you that that's a huge honor, and and to get to reprise, you know, Margarita well, again to come back and everything to have that moment. Uh, I mean, that's awesome. What was really baffling to me was so Midsummer Scream this year for for Fright Fest specifically, they were focusing on the fact that it was Fright Fest's thirtieth year, right? And you know, we had the Conjuring Maze that was announced and Saw that was announced, and those are huge, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was, I was. I was under the impression that people who were going were going to promote Fright Fest 30th, which they were. So when they were like, hey, we want Margot, I was like, 
huh? <laughs> and they're like, well, you screen break, right? And I was like, yeah, aye, aye, captain. <laughs> yes, <sir." laughs> Um, So it was, it was so honor like it was honoring i guess or like there's a word i'm looking for it was wild that everyone else was like you know that we we had nightmare and we had lorraine lorraine and we had you know all these we had captain gara from devil's triangle yeah and then there's margo from screen break and i was the only screen breaks character and it was it was re- it was like a huge huge honor and i i to this day hold every memory of midsummer screen like so close to my heart um oh man truly, I, yeah. wow yeah i mean and it, the fact it's, that they had margo go on stage for the like the panel i was like I was so <laughs> you know i uh i mean talk about that weekend alone i mean it's always a it's always a huge and, and busy weekend for us uh covering the event so you know we're we're splitting up we're jumping to different panels and stuff i unfortunately I missed the Six Flags panel in person, but I, I immediately, when I saw the footage and I had it, because I had my buddy go, I was covering another panel. But the minute I, I got that footage, that was one of the first panels that I watched because, you know, I, I wanted to see what they were announcing. I wanted to see what they were doing. Um, and when I, when I, you know, I'm watching it just like everyone else, uh, you know, not knowing. What was, and when Margot comes out and does the claps for The Conjuring... <laughs> You know, at first, I don't know what's going on. I'm like, oh, no, is Margo, is Margo lost? Like, what's going on here? Uh, and then that's when they announced they're, you know, they're doing The Conjuring, which, might I add, uh, had to, uh, looking at it from a, from a haunt fan from different haunts, it had to have been a huge slap in the face to Halloween Horror Nights. Um, I know they've been trying to do it for years, and, and to see Six Flags get the, the rights to do it was, a, I think it was a, a very big shock in, in the haunt world. Um but I, I think overall, I mean, we got to interact with Margot uh, on the on the floor too. Uh, you know, Six Flags had a nice, very big photo op uh, corner uh, on the main floor with a 30th anniversary logo, a giant cake. Uh, Margot was kind enough to come up and and say a few words on 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 camera for us about the 30th. Um, yeah, I, I think she had maybe one too many and and forgot that the 30th was coming up but you know she she was there and she made sure she uh she helped announce that but i think what was the big the big also reveal for that of her being there was um not only did they announce condemned house party was going to be returning for fright fest because it was you know super popular during screen break but they also announced that same day and i think a lot of people forgot about this but that same night they also announced screen break 2024 would be happening um, and the reason why I say I think a lot of people forgot about it is because when they did reannounce it again closer to the event, it was a shock in the haunt world that it was happening. I'm like, did we not see the Six Flags panel at Midsummer Scream? Because they announced that it was happening. We we're just waiting on info as to what they were doing this year. But yay, you know, I was I was stoked to see that 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 got announced and everything. But yeah, I mean, Margo was was fantastic that weekend. Um, we had, like I said, some great interactions and, uh, you know, again, Midsummer Scream is a blinking, you'll miss it moment. I mean, before you know it, you know, when you're entering those doors Friday, you're already walking out on Sunday evening, just done with the event. And it's, it goes by it so was, fast, but it's great. It was such a, an amazing experience. I think one of the things that was when it hit me that Margot was as popular as she was, um, because I remember Margo was getting out of the van and walking into the convention hall. And, you know, they have all the people lined up before they open up the convention hall and walking past everyone and hearing like six, seven, like it's so many people like yelling Margo's name. That's when I was like, Oh, <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and then um, Mike Ostrom, beautiful, beautiful um, head of entertainment, I believe is his official title. Love that man so much. He's one of my favorite people at, fright fest when he told me like hey we want you to like speak in the panel like d- d- do a bit for the panel i was like me <laughs> Mar- margo um and that's when i realized like oh, oh people people know margo and um specifically announcing conjuring i've never seen the conjuring um oh wow have you seen it since then you still haven't seen it to this day i'm too scared i'm too scared 
I've only ever watched two horror movies, and one of them was for a class, and the second one was to see what the big hype was about. This and... is what you need to do. One weekend when you and all your roommates have, like, a free weekend, <laughs> nobody's got homework, it's kind of like that, hey, this weekend's perfect. This weekend is going to rain all weekend. I, I, mm-hmm. I, you know, it'd be great. I know you. I know it's the final weekend of screen break, um, but maybe Sunday if you get Sunday home. Sunday night, really man. Good. Something. Um, conjuring. And Conjuring 2, I highly suggest I know out of the series. One of my roommates, one of my roommates who used to do Haunt in Colorado, okay. she wants me to watch The Conjuring. So it, it is a must. I think it was, in my opinion, if I have to be like on like a from a like critiquing it, it was one of those movies that really I think sparked a revolution again that you know started with Insidious and then this one just kind of elevated that and really brought out the love for horror again. Like there was a dry spout where horror was kind of eh. Those mm-hmm. movies like Insidious, Conjuring, those movies brought back horror, uh, in my opinion, to like the modern era, to the modern day people. And now any horror movie that comes out in theaters makes a shit ton of money because people love to get scared. So yeah. uh, look at Screen Break, for example. Look at, I mean, I, I would say just by seeing <laughs> the people there, just by seeing uh, social media engagement, um, opening weekend when they had the media nights and stuff, I would say that this year it was a record-breaking year for them as far as screen break goes. And I know it's only the second year, and that's you know it's saying a lot already. But it's like I, I think they doubled this year than they did last year, in my opinion. And the events has one more weekend still. Yeah, it's it's been there's been looking at how last year was and comparing it to this year, it's blown up. And it's kind of it, again, it's it's wild to me because I realize people know Margot. Like I, so right next to me right now, I have all the bracelets that I've received from this season. Wow. Um, yeah, Hold these on. are all bracelets. I see a pink and green. Mm-hmm. Uh, dang. Okay. I also received a rose. Okay. Yeah. Um, these are all bracelets that Margot has gotten, and I I keep them in my bag. I keep them with me all the time. And um, Winona during Fright Fest, like Winona got one bracelet and I wore it every single day. I love that bracelet so much. It says bugs and uh, bugs and hisses instead of like hugs and kisses. Right. It's my favorite thing ever. <laughs> and Margo came around. And now she's got like a whole jewelry box full of things. It's insane. And like I everyone who's come to Screen Break this year is so passionate and it makes me so happy. Like, it's literally, I get to go into work and be around people who are passionate and then go talk to guests that are passionate. And it's it's the best thing ever. I love Screen Break this year. It's so good. They took every like everything that was great about Screen Break last year, it's been quadrupled. And I'm yeah. so happy. I love this event. I, I agree. I, I think that, you know, when it was first brought to the haunt world's attention, that a theme park like Six Flags, you know, like um, I don't think and the reason why I say I don't see that with like any disrespect or anything. I say that in the sense of out of all theme parks that could have done it, Six Flags was not the one that I saw coming doing it. And I'm blown away by what they have accomplished with it. The, the experiment that they had with year one. Honestly, they saw how much of a success it was after the first weekend and were like, this is going to be something. Um, yeah. and, and year two comes around and, you know, we go, we go through the saw maze. I didn't get to go through it during, uh, you know, Fright Fest. So it was good to go see that, um, you know, condemned house party is always a, a fun time to go through. Um, I, we went through condemned house party at the end of the night, uh, when we went this year and they were playing, we like to party the old six flags song. And, uh, the entire time in the maze, I just was wishing and hoping that the, the bald guy would come out and start dancing. Mr. Six. Yeah. Um, he, he never did, but you know, it's okay. In my head, we had a little dance party. So, you know, you uh, know, in our hearts, we're all Mr. Six at the end. We are. Yeah. We all want to get off the bus and start dancing and big glasses, all that fun stuff. Yep. (laughs) It's great. Uh, but Mm -hmm. you know, so coming off that, you know, that that wild wave over, you know, for, for Midsummer Scream, um, you know, that was a lot of fun. That weekend was great. Again, Margo did an amazing job on camera with us and, and just gave us a great segment that we ended up putting in our vlog and everything. So that was a lot of fun. Um, 
going into haunt season 2023 uh fright fest 2023 uh you're back on on demons again um how was that kind of because i know was so i was under the impression because I, I didn't get to go so i don't know for sure you can probably clear this up for me i was under the impression that margo actually was supposed to make an appearance in condemned house party for fright fest or was she just the poster oh. cover for that she was the poster cover for it because Margot um, is commonly referred to in the haunt community as the face of Screen Break. Right. Um, so to sort of promote the condemned house party from Screen Break was at Fright Fest. That's uh, why she was there. Okay. Um, Margot was not at Fright Fest. Margot was a little too trashed from Midsummer Scream. She she just um, decided to rest up for Screen Break 2024. Yeah, except for the final night. Margot Margo oh, did. A little one night only, right? Oh, yeah. That's that it. was... That was crazy fun. Um, it so the whole season I was in Devil's Triangle as Winona. I I love that area so much. I love the story. I love the costumes. I love everybody who's there. I it it was just the Triangle so man. It's it's such a beautiful zone when it's when the way it's lit, everything, I, the, the the designs of the sets. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think, and, and it's just for me the specific lighting they use for that zone really brings everything to life. It's so good. And like, so I'm a theater student and I, I like, I also specialize in like theater design and stuff like that. Right. When I would be out in the zone, when you look at the fog that's going up through the trees and the light is hitting through the trees, through the fog, mm -hmm. it, you feel like you're underwater. Yeah. And that's the whole point. And I will sit here and say that the lighting and the sound in Devil's Triangle is some of my favorite at Scream Break or at Fright, at Fright Fest. The behind it's, the scenes, it's, it's how it's made is always what fascinates uh, us the most. I love it so much, man. It's, it's the best. It really is. I mean, when I get a new movie, that's the first thing I do is I go to the behind the scenes. I don't. I already seen the movie. Now let me now show me how the movie was made. Exactly. So, exactly. Uh, yeah, I I agree. I, I I think Devils has some of the best uh, scenic, uh, especially the little walk through cave. That was when we first met you right there when you <gasps> called that your house. Um, that that <laughs> whole little area is awesome. I mean, just kind of you know, like I said, it, the the lighting and the fog. Like like you said really is the one that illuminates and brings that underwater feeling to life so it's my favorite area and and getting to be back there again this year just it was it's just so nice and um uh the first year that Winona was out I had a beautiful makeup artist I had Emily and um this year this past year I had Margot's makeup artist um as Winona's makeup artist and I love Jenna Jenna is phenomenal at what she does she's so kind so creative and one of my favorite things about jenna is that we will talk about like the design and the story of the characters and stuff like that and it just like every single night i walk out of the makeup room so happy and i just i feel so pretty and scary and it's just mm -hmm. it's really really nice and this season was really nice, especially since, you know, I was driving back from San Diego every weekend. Right. Um, it was my first quarter out of, like, a university. Like, I just transferred to UCSD. Um, and it was just really nice to have such beautiful people in Devil's Triangle, beautiful everything. It just, it, this was a really, really nice season, oh. especially with the 30th. Yeah, the 30th. I mean, that, for, I mean, you, I mean, talk about the haunt world last year. I mean, you had a stacked lineup at Halloween Horror Nights, man. You had the 50th anniversary at Not Scary Farm. You had the 30th anniversary at Six Flags. I mean, this, I say it a lot, and and, and this is the time, really, it is. Uh, and, I, and I say it, and I compare, I always compare Haunt and Wrestling together because this is really a good time to get into wrestling. This is a great time to be a Haunt fan. I mean, you're getting, you're we're getting to a point now, and it's, it's so nuts that I finally get to say this out loud, but we are so getting to a point now where Haunt is becoming a year-round thing. Um, yeah. You know, you got events like Scream Break, you know. Reign of Terror and Thousand Oaks does a halfway to Halloween. They didn't do it this year because they're reconstructing their layout for, for next season, but every year they usually would do a halfway to Halloween one week in event, you know. Um, escape rooms out in Las Vegas are all horror themed, you know, and, and they have a new year round Halloween Horror Nights coming out in Vegas that Universal yeah. is, is opening. I mean, like I said, Scream Break, you know, all these events, conventions, all this stuff. I mean, they're, you know, Haunt is so big now. People love to get scared. People love to be immersed into things that we are starting to become in an age where Haunt is almost year round. It's just outside. I mean, Halloween Horror Nights in Orlando announced their dates already. They start in August and end in November. That's two whole months of Haunt. Yeah. I mean, that is 
insane to believe that we are starting to bleed into August. And now, I mean, no, the November thing's always kind of been in and out. It all depended on the calendar year. But to the fact that we're bleeding into August now, that I never thought in my – all the years that I've gone to haunt that I'd ever see that. And we're yeah. seeing it. It's – it like, I have started to get more into haunt as well. Um because I, while I may not be a huge horror fan, because I'm a huge scaredy cat, I like immersive entertainment. It's one of my favorite things. And Haunt is really, really good at that. Yeah. Um, like, characters put their whole heart into both their characters and the world that they're in. And it's just really nice to be able, because I went to Not Scary Farm for the first time this year. I and went to Not Scary Farm. You went Farm for the 50th, period. huh? Yeah. Did you have a good time? Oh, oh. Fantastic time! I had um, been so talking. It's a, to it's, a, it's a big world, huh? And, and a much different world compared to what you're used to seeing, right? Yeah, it, it's it's really it's just really magical to me. It is. Like I said, I'm a theater student, and I love immersive entertainment and stuff like that. You know, that's what I want to go into, and it's really nice to like like even though I'm a huge scaredy cat, it's nice to go to haunt and see just how into pe- like into it people get. And I like people. I like seeing people be happy yeah. and seeing people who like horror and people who like haunt way more than I do just thriving in these like spaces. It yeah. makes me happy. And it's just. Oh. It, and and talk <laughs> about, you know, I mean, Six Flags is good at it, too, with the zones and everything. But talk about some storytelling, man. I mean, Knott's really does that immersive immerse you into uh, these stories that they're trying to tell whether you're going to be in a world of vampires, whether you're going to be in a world of 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 different creatures of all kinds of sorts, uh, a, a witch, you know, the, you want to be in the twenties. I mean, you want to be at a carnival, like they will take you to all those places in one location. Six flags is the very same way. You can end up from underwater to a city being taken over by, by murderous clowns to, uh, all the way on exile Hill. I mean, it is just, you, you go to all these, you know, all the, the aftermath that's, you know, the cyberverse and everything like it is insane of how much, if you really pay attention and really, you know, appreciate the art and aspect of Haunt, you're being immersed into a story the entire time you're there from the moment you enter those gates to the moment you leave. Yeah. My first year working at Bright Fest when I was um, in Aftermath, I got so into the story of like everywhere, all the zones that I managed to somehow in my little, it was a motorcycle, in my little um, like ADHD brain. I got so into it that I was like, what if, what if all these were connected? And I like started drawing all the characters from different zones and stuff. And I remember um, someone from wardrobe saw how into it I was getting. I was like, wow, you, you really like this event. I was like, yeah, obviously like all <laughs> the stories of the different zones. It's just so cool. Uh, so yeah. I, I just, I just, I, that's my favorite thing about haunt oh, is amazing. the story of zones. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm a, I'm a sucker for a good story, man. I really am. Like if you can pull me in, and, and really feel like I'm involved in this somehow, I will play the game and I will love it every single way. I mean, you talk about, you know, the first, you know, last year and even this year when we had the interactions with you, um, you know, you were pulling me into a story uh, that you were trying to tell and try to sell and everything. And, and I was, you know, I was I was playing along. It was and that, and that goes for everybody at Screen Break from the moment we got there. I I I. I was so, and this is one of my favorite things of all time, you know, and, and, and I love it. And it makes me, it makes me blush. There are moments when we walk into parks and we see you guys dressed up in, in makeup uh, and full character and everything. And the amount of reactions and, and people who know us, it, it truly, I truly feel blessed. I truly feel honored about that because it's, it's really, you know, we're trying to the, the message we're trying to prove on this this podcast is although you guys play some amazing characters, you guys scare really well, you guys really bring it all to life, you know, with a team of people behind you, you know, and uh, so many people um, in the end of the day, you guys are fans. You guys are human. You guys you guys are the same as anyone else when it comes to loving haunt, you know, and the end of the day. You know, you guys were the ones that first walked into these gates, and that's what drew your interest. And now you're scaring within the gates, you know. And so, you know, I, that is what I love the most. We had so many people over Screen Break that uh, came up to us 
that were super kind, people that we've interviewed in the past um, and people that we've met in the past. You know, I will say this about Six Flags, uh, as far as monsters go, you guys have been super welcoming from the first day we walked in even to this day, we, we love going out there. It, it's so awesome to see the stories that you guys, you know, tell and to be a part of that and to be, you know, and, you know, to see what you guys bring to the table. I mean, it's so awesome to go out there because every time we go out there, man, we, we are welcomed with open, open arms. And I, I'm truly thankful for that and truly grateful for that because, you know, not a lot of places you go do that. And you guys do not have to go out of your way at all. I don't I don't pull you guys aside for content or like ask you guys to do this. Like you guys just genuinely come up to me. I've had so many people, you included, but um, my, my buddy AJ, I ran into him at Screen Break on last Friday. Oh. And, um, you know, I've had him on the show a few times and he, he pulled me aside and he goes, I want to let you know that, you know, your podcast was the reason why um, – you know, you were the first podcast I was able to express myself as an actor, as a, as a scare actor and stuff. And I really want to appreciate, I, you know, I just want to thank you for that. You know, you are really, you tell all these stories, you let everybody come on your show and tell these stories. And like to hear that from him, who's one of the nicest guys I've ever met, you know, mm -hmm. to hear it from him, it, it was just really touching in that moment. And I'm so proud of AJ. I'm so proud yeah. of, you know, everything that you guys done there and, and to constantly hear that feedback, you know, it, it, it really shows as to why I do this. I mean, I, I don't do this for the money. I don't do this for the fame. I do this because I do this for me and essentially, because I do this because I, I, I am selfish. I like to listen to stories. That's why I'm really doing it. Cause I just want to talk to people and listen to stories of haunt. That's <laughs> why I'm doing it really. But the best part about that, what came with that is the fans are like me. And, and and they they genuinely love to hear what you guys have to say, especially people who are getting into this industry or who are already in this industry to see the next generation come in and make an impact. I mean, I am so blessed to be part of this industry, to be a part of this uh, community, and uh, I'm going to keep doing what I do until I can't do it no more. And how hard is it to just sit down, hit record, and talk? Because I don't think that's very hard for me. I remember screen break last year um being out on set and you giving me the nights of horror sticker be like we we hey you should come on the podcast and i remember immediately going backstage and be like guys guys i think you should get invited to go to, on a podcast like i <laughs> was so happy and excited and it's it's really nice to like my favorite thing is when people come up and they're like do you remember me like of course i do like <laughs> It makes, I, I, again, I like making people happy and it's just, it's been such a wild year, especially like, cause a lot has happened to me in a year, like a lot. Like I went right. to mid scream and, and I'm on the board of directors for a theater company now. <laughs> and wow. Yeah. Like I wow. literally, yeah, I, I, so that's, that's the thing that we can, I'm, I'm making a show. It's a whole thing. Um, nice. but yeah, Margot Rita got me a role Margo where my Rita. voice is. Yeah. Man, I, I, I better see Margarita in the audience on night one. I, 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 want, <laughs> I want a front row seat next to her, and we're going to critique it really good, and we're going to give our honest thoughts. She may be a little tipsy, but, you know, it's okay. I'll, I'll control that. We'll, we'll, we'll bring a whole case of water. We'll keep feeding her some water. We'll, we'll keep her tame, of yeah, course. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep her sober. We'll be okay. Oh, thank you. I, I need a backup handler, man. It, yeah. it gets to a lot, but I mean, you got a lot on your plate, so I got to step in, you know, so, man. but it's, it genuinely like specifically after going on the nights of like, after going on this podcast, um, I remember everyone at work coming up to me like, I saw your podcast episode. It was great. And me being so flustered and then realizing like watching all of the videos that Margo was in and all this stuff. And like, it's just so Everyone who pays attention to the characters and the actors and all that, it's just really nice to see. Because um, I, I went into this just like, I want to make magic. I want to I want to make people happy. And it's really interesting that I'm getting something back. It, I, I don't know. Like, like, I get to see people who get super excited from the event. Like, I will watch, I will watch the vlogs of the event just to see, like, I hope people are enjoying it and, you know, stuff like that. And it makes me happy that people are happy. And... The fact that you specifically were like, hey, I want to talk to you about you. 
that was something that when 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 you had said that and and I came on and I and I got off after like we we talked for like a good three hours after our podcast last time we did it was it was a good conversation I mean you and I um I consider you a really good friend uh honestly yeah. like outside of what you do with haunt and everything um you and I have had some uh, really good conversations about just a lot of things um, when we first met each other, you know, just to kind of get to know one another, just to, uh, you know, and everything. And it was, it was honestly like, it was, it was really cool. Cause you know, I, I talked about something before we went on the air about, um, and it's funny how it's coming full circle with what we're doing right now, but we talked about uh, behind the scenes of everything. Um, and that's exactly what this show is. It, it's a, it's a we lift the curtain just enough for the the guests, the audience, the fans, or anything to get enough inside of who you are as the person, what it takes to motivate you to play the character or influences of, on the character, and and that's what we're really trying to figure out is the kind of psychology and the kind of. Uh, the building the foundation to building the full house of like this character of all these characters that you've played or, or whatever it is makeup. If you're in the makeup field, I mean, there's a lot of talented makeup artists over at six flags. That is one thing that I have to say is second to none is the six flags make six flags makeup team for sure. And makeup is just so like every time I go in and I see just like all the love being poured into these looks, it just, it makes me happy. Like, it's just so good. And and I'm just in awe. I, I ask anyone who's been my makeup artist, whenever they're doing anything, I'm like, so, so what are you doing now? Because I just like learning and I like knowing what they're doing. Um, and it's just, it's so, so something that's really interesting is Margot. Margot has a face. Margot has a very recognizable face. Um, when Jenna isn't there and someone else has to do Margot, it's very interesting to see other takes on Margot. Mm-hmm makes me really happy because it's like oh my gosh now someone else gets to do art yeah and like i i love i love art i love when people make art i love when people do art i love when people are creative and so just seeing all these creatives in a space getting to be creative and like have their their art being put out other places and then other artists coming in and like picking it up like it's just it's just magical to me and i as a theater major if it isn't obvious (laughs) I just love art and it's just really, really cool. And like, I, I'm a theme park enthusiast and an artist and an actor and everything about Fright Fest and Screen Break is perfect for me. And it's just, it, I love, I love it so much. It's just, oh, man. I can go on for hours about that. <laughs> I, I uh, yeah, I'm the same way. I, I love theme parks. I love all that stuff. And and uh, one of the thing, one of the things to, to kind of sidetrack with that little theme park thing real quick, um, one of the things that I'm very much looking forward to because uh, it's the first time in my lifetime that I would actually get to experience something like this, um, which would be the opening of the brand new Epic Universe over at Universal Studios in Florida. Um, I think what they're doing there is not only game changing, but revolutionary um, to do a whole section on the monsters of Universal's classic films um, to me as a fan that's that alone is the reason why i would go um to see the next chapter in the wizarding world with fantastic beasts and and harry potter the ministry of magic i mean how to train your dragon you know uh nintendo world uh, another expansion of that new rides coming in um it it is incredible to see that and i i don't want to miss that opening year i think it's something special where i actually get to see an actual full-on big theme park and actually go into it you know and it, it, you don't see that very often six flags has been here for years disneyland has been here for years disneyland's like a pioneer disneyland and knots are the pioneers of the socal theme park area universal studios has been there for over a hundred years because it was an actual working studio before a theme park um but yeah I, I, i'm the same way but yeah so I, I i know that love i mean just to see everything like that and, and then you know you're talking about you know um a great pivot back to uh, to Margot real quick. Um, you talked about uh, at the end of Fright Fest after you got to play Winona for a whole season. You got to you got to have that one night to to contact Margot and say, "Hey, you you got it. You got a, a one night contract. Let's uh, yeah. let's make it happen." <laughs> that was that was a really interesting thing for me. Um, it's sort of a thing at Fright Fest where um, certain people. 
on the last night, they get to do fun stuff. And so the fact that Margot is in, in, in a tier where I was able to be like, hey, Margot read a clown for a night? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Margot Rita was in City Under Siege for a night. Wow. Now, poor, poor Margot. She has a fear of clowns. Uh, but, you know, that was holy, holy crow. Uh, that was that's a that's a whole nother playing field right there, ain't it? Yeah. That's a that's a yeah. I have There's a some new legends respect. there. I have a new respect for City Under Siege people. It's. It's it's incredibly different than anywhere else in the park, and also, the the energy over there is just really it's it's like so different, and it's like high energy, and like you don't stop moving. Like Winona moves very slowly. Devil's Triangle is very slow, scary area. Right. City Under Siege is a high energy, fast, scary area, and so. Being Margo in a high energy scary area like that and and just getting to have crazy amounts of interactions, be like, oh yeah, come to screen break, stuff like that. Like that night was actually like so crazy. Well, and I and I have to say, I think that zone just got even better too, because they recently just opened up Wonder Woman. So that really spaced out that area so much for for them to play in on top of what they already had. So I mean, I'm glad that they have more of that space to really run around and have fun in too. Something I really liked that they did this year too was that they had those massive bomb props that were like the light up. Oh, they uh, they were at the back of the zone, um, past where like the the digital archway was. They have these massive bombs, and as someone who loves the stories of Fright Fest, being able to see the city under siege being under siege yeah. with those massive bombs, that was like, I was so excited. I'm yeah. I'm a fan before anything else. Oh yeah, but you know it's it's so interesting though because like. Again, I'm a theater major, if we couldn't tell. Uh, <laughs> it was really interesting because, like, I do a lot of character work for Margot, like, a lot, a lot, a lot of character work. Uh, there's a Margot Rita playlist, fun fact. Wow. I'd love to hear what she, what her her taste in music is. Oh, honey. Hold up. I got to show you something real quick. So the playlist is called A Little Bit of Rita. A Little Bit and, of Rita. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's songs that Margot would listen to or songs that emulate Margot. I'm always looking for new suggestions. But there's so much Pitbull and Red Hot Chili Peppers on here. It's kind of it's kind of criminal. I could see her going from that alternative, fast paced Red Hot Chili Peppers vibe to Pitbull real quick. Oh, hun, uh, there was so at my lovely university. I live in a suite with a bunch of other people who are all fans of Margot, <laughs> and not a lot of them have licenses. So when I drive people around. They're like, can we listen to the Margarita playlist? And it's becoming famous. It it's it's become like a staple. Like if I'm driving anyone anywhere, I'm like, I'll turn on the Rita playlist. Um, but like I remember one of the people who was in my car once was like, Yeah, Margot does seem like a pit bull girly. And I got a flashback to last year when whenever Pitbull would come on, I would drop everything I was doing and run to the center of the zone and just bust it down. Oh man. So yes, Margot is a pit bull girly. And there's the reason why Red Hot Chili Peppers is on here is because one of the first nights in the makeup room they played Humpty Bump by Red Hot Chili Peppers and that just became the Margot song. And I it's, mean, it's, it still is. I, I trust me. I, I I'm I'm a huge fan of music too. Um, yeah. So I I can I can literally sit in a zone all night, film mm -hmm. a video, and then when I go home and edit, I'll be like this song with this zone thinks this fits well like i love music the music tells so much stories and and i feel like you know with if you listen to the right music the right lyrics stories can be told you get uh, me you get me on such a deep level it, it is it's true though i mean it's it's the fact that you know there's so many uh, you know and i and i listen to a lot of rock and roll so like i'm listening to bands like led zeppelin you know like metallica all these bands and stuff uh, and even some bands today will still do it too, but there's a lot of great storytelling and 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 music. And uh, if you really just sit there and listen to lyrics, it, it some of it gets pretty deep, you know. Like, and it, it's it, it's wow. There's a lot of uh, one of my favorite bands to really, if you really listen to their messages and really listen to the lyrics of their music, uh, Pearl Jam. Yes, great yes. band. And mm -hmm. there's so many in the album Ten alone. I mean, 
there's so many songs where you know you can hear just hearing the lyrics it's just like wow uh, one of my favorites for the longest because a guitar hero was even flow never knew the meaning of the song i just thought it was a freaking cool upbeat song uh it was hard and heavy i loved it and then you find out the whole song is about a homeless guy and it's it's about it's about eddie vetter of pearl jam because he lives in seattle just walking around seeing this homeless guy every day and then one day just not seeing him and i was like what an upbeat song talking about kind of a sad story i'm just like that is it's so amazing what we can do with music for me a lot of my character work um comes from music because i am i'm the kind of person that so i have adhd and so whenever i do anything i need music yeah and depending on what i'm doing the music i listen to affects that so i, I mentioned that i'm on the board of directors for a theater company right now it's an audio drama company okay and um they have three shows that are produced and they're already on Spotify. And the fourth show that is my first time audio uh, acting, voice acting at all, is coming out next month. Nice. And all four of those shows were written by the owner of the company. Okay. I went from not even being in the company at all to on the board of directors in the span of like two months. Oh. And now their fifth show is not written by the owner of the company and is written by yours truly. Nice. And the entire plot of this show comes from a comic that I made like seven years ago based off of this, the album Dark at the End of the Tunnel by Oingo Boingo. Oingo the entire such show. Album. Oh, it's it's such, such a good album yeah. because I remember sitting in my freshman freshman year like English class and listening to Dark at the End of the Tunnel and going, oh, there's a story here. There has to be. And so, um, yeah. I, like for me, a big part of character work is... Um, it's it's music and then also my character journals that I do, but music is just such a I I I like every character I play has a character playlist. Winona has a character playlist. Um, I'm pretty sure yeah, Jane Doe from Aftermath has a character playlist too. Like it's I can it's imagine a, Jane Doe would be very metal esque like Mad yeah. Max style kind of stuff. That one was very uh, that one was like the stereotypical like Halloween songs, but then also like like very Mad Max themes because it's in Aftermath. Yeah. You know? So that uh, was... When I think of that, I think of like the world going insane and everyone's going ape shit. Uh, and yeah. I mean, yep. that, and that's one of my favorite mazes at the at the, at the the event because of just how massive the sets are. I know that used to be part of like one of the old stunt shows. The Bat, yeah. I think it was Batman. They did a Batman stunt show. It was the Batman show. show. And it, so it, mad it, I never it, got to see that. But, you know, yeah, me too. Me, me being but a diehard it, Batman fan, I'm just like, how do I miss that? <laughs> I, those sets are that's my it's i'm i'm biased i'm biased but i love I, that's my favorite maze because of those sets um, oh yeah it's, I, it, it's my favorite maze because the sets and the theming the flamethrower i mean it's awesome oh my god it's just so good second it's, favorite for me will go to vault vault 666 that that's a very yeah. good one condemned will go third um <laughs> it's really hard to put those in a top three because they are all good in their own ways but mm. i have to give it to aftermath for number one yeah my top three would probably be Aftermath because the story. And the second one, honestly, I like Truth or Dare a lot. I didn't get I've... to see the revamped version this year. Yeah. Though. I, I went the, the first version? year where they kind of were like, we're just going to make it work this year. And then the second year, they really heavily revamped it. Yeah. And and the the story is, is I'm again, a huge story person. Yeah. I love that. I love that maze for the story. And then I think my third would probably have to be Willoughby's just because the story I forgot of Willoughby. about Willoughby's. See, that's another good one. Oh. Like it, it, that one right there. I mean, just the the paranormal aspect of it, and it's so good. Yeah. Um. Even the sewer. What's the sewer one they have? The sewer, sewer one. Sewer souls. Sewer yeah. souls is 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 terrifying too of its own because I don't know what's gonna be popping out. Yeah. Um, I got to go through Saw. I really I I really dug the sets for Saw. They were really well detailed. Mm -hmm. Um. Really felt like I was in the movie. Uh, mm -hmm. The only one I didn't get to go through is Conjuring so far, so I hope that that was pretty good. I saw a walkthrough of it; it looked pretty fun. It looked like they—they're really, both really good. Yeah. I exclude those two from my ranking because those are like IPs. Those are IPs, and they're like in their own category of their own, and yeah. they are fantastic. I, it, it always amazes me seeing how, like things get interpreted into different media. Right. They're really good. If you go to Fright Fest, go go in those two mazes. Go, I, I, I plan on going next year for sure. I want to get back out there. Yeah. Screen Break it's, was it's... that kind of like, this is us getting back yep. out here. Um, no, I, I absolutely love uh, 
Fright Fest as a whole. I mean, you guys do an incredible job every year. I'm glad you got to play back on Devil's Triangle. I'm glad you got to have that one night under City Under Siege as, you know, uh, and Margarita had to come back out and play. That, that I think that's really cool, kind of like having that fear of clowns but also promoting the screen break. I think that's just the best blend. I can only imagine you were getting scared of every clown like every five seconds because they were oh, everywhere. Right. It was really because one of the bits i used to do at screen break last year was like oh i'm scared of dead people if you see dead people let me know yeah blink blink um <laughs> and so the whole clown thing was like i'm scared of clowns if you see clowns let me know meanwhile margo has a big clown nose and the clown makeup and it's like I i'm terrified of clowns and then i remember one guest pulled out their phone and i just screamed bloody murder and ran <laughs> just booked it Oh, man. I mean, I, I think that's so awesome that they gave you that freedom to have that fun and do that. I mean, mm -hmm. it was so fun. I, I, Fright Fest and Screen Break, they're just so fun. Don't like, don't get it twisted. I go out there every night and I just have fun. I, I remember, so I was, I was kind of nervous for this season uh, for, of Screen Break specifically because I was like, man, people like Margot. I don't remember what I did last year that made people like Margot. And my best friend was like, well, you had fun. And that stuck with me. Yeah. And so I've just been having fun again this year. People like Margo again. And it, and that's all I mean, that's all it is. I, I, I and I, I I understand, too, that um, for this year for Screen Break, I mean, now we're in 2024. I mean, um, I, there wasn't a place on social media that I didn't see Margo. Um, yeah. And I understand, you know, that that's a lot of pressure on a person, you know, I mean, especially you being more fairly newer to the haunt scene. Um, did you think going back to year one, did you think this character would become as big as it did? No, um, actually, the intention for Demon's Row was that Thurstonator was going to be the guy right. that everyone would pay attention to. So when Margot started getting popular, that's why I, said I didn't believe it. Right. Like when, when um, my good friend Bear, Laz, right. would come up to me and go, hey, you're all over social media. I'd be like, yeah, funny, right? Fair enough. And I remember he sat me down one day and went, look up Screen Break right now on YouTube. And I did. And I saw the thumbnails and I just sat there in complete silence, like petrified. Right. Because like I I I had no idea because I, I don't do this for you. Like I just make people happy, right? Right. And I remember like, the account blowing up and i remember during fright fest people coming up and be like hey where's margo and then the whole thing with midsummer scream i never expected margo to get this popular but i'm really happy that she did mm -hmm. because the stories that i've heard from people being like hey you really made my night or hey you made me feel a lot better about this thing or hey you make me feel safe and happy and represented that's what makes me really happy is that i get to have my tiny little platform that people know me and i get like people get to see me and they get to be really happy because they go oh i know that person right they get to come to like what's really trippy is when people come to the park they're like hey i saw you on youtube and i came to see you that's trippy because oh, wow. in my little brain margo's just silly little fun thing i get to do yeah and when people are like yeah i saw you on youtube i saw you miss ever scream i'm like huh <laughs> <laughs> it, it it is something I will tell you this right now because um I've I've been so blessed to have that happen to me a few times of like hey you know I watch this I watch that you know I'm a huge fan of what you guys do it you never will get used to it it's just something that one of those to this day I've been doing this gig for I think going on seven years now um and six or seven years now I think six years maybe. Uh, to this day, I still get nervous when people come up to me and like tell me that they watch the, the stuff and they like the stuff. Like, I sometimes don't even know what to say. I'm just like, yeah, it's thank, thank you. I, I, I appreciate it. And, then, and, and I don't want anyone to think that I'm coming off as like an asshole or anything. It's just, I yeah. genuinely, I freeze up in the moment because like it catches me off guard sometimes of someone going, hey, by the way, I just want to let you know I watch your stuff. You know, it was great. There was one time me and my best friend were sitting at a bench at Knott's and there was this kid sitting next to us and me and my, my buddy were talking the whole time. Kid didn't even really talk to us or anything, but all of a sudden this kid gets up and goes, all right, bye, Knights of Horror. It was great. It was great sitting with you guys. I was like, I'm like, wait, 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 come back here. I got to I got to We got to restart that. What, what was going on? What, what, what? Like that for me was like. Oh, oh shit! He was a fan the whole time, and me and Sammy were just sitting talking, and we didn't even like. 
And, and like he did because he never said anything to us. So I was just like, I just, you know, I was respecting his space. You know, I, I we had our space. So but then when he got up and said that, I was like. Oh wow, and th- and this wasn't even when we were I I you know we weren't at where we are now as far as numbers wise go. We were still kind of growing. I and until this day, I still think we're growing. Um, but you know, it it's just I am incredibly thankful that people actually want to tune tune in every single week and watch me babble my mouth about haunt, um, whether it's off season or not. Um, I've been very fortunate enough the last three months including this month um to do uh something new with the podcast that i didn't get an opportunity to do a character appreciation month this year or last year so i wanted to do sort of a character appreciation year in a sense um so every month uh including april we've been doing themed months we did the goring 20s we did forsaken lake i've I've been watching them (laughs) It's, it's it's just it's been fun and so I was going to do something else originally. So this is the plans for, you don't know, here's a little behind the scenes, if you will. Um, the best part. Originally, I had plans to do every scare zone of knots within wow. the next couple of months. And I was yeah. going to pull some people that um, I really liked or that I wanted to interview or who were interested in doing it uh, and do that. Uh, I won't say who was going to be this month, but... I, 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 cause it may happen next month. I don't know. Um, I, then, uh, and then I came to a point where I was like, maybe I'm going to take a break with the mindless or podcast. We just hit 200 episodes. So I'll take a break there. Start Congratulations. Another, by yeah, the way. Thank you so much. I, I, I mean, you, and you're part of that history of 200. So, um, and now you're on the, on the road to 300. So there we go. <laughs> um, but it, <laughs> it's, it's insane to think that we, we've done it for this long, but yeah, it, it so I, I was originally going to put this on, on hold for a little bit, maybe do like a little break start up another one of my other podcasts uh, for another season, uh, do that for a little bit, and then um, that will bring me into haunt season. Hmm. I was having so much fun in the beginning of, or the mid-March when you guys started of watching. You know, I tried not to watch too much because I wanted to go see it for myself with my own eyes, but I was having so much fun week after week going on social media, watching you guys at screen break, watching all my favorite YouTubers who were there on media night to, to cover it and, and to see what they got and the experiences they had. Some of them had never been. So to hear the amazing words that I heard coming out of that first weekend, going into the weekend we came in last weekend, you know, it was just incredible. So, you know, I sat there for a bit and then it became a no brainer after that. I was like, I want to do spring break on the nights of horror in the month of April. Um, Mm -hmm with the screen break takeover and you know we we like i said we we released that last episode last week um the day of the the you know that second to final weekend and we had so many people come up to us that day you included i mean you you <laughs> spotted me from a crowd of people you you happened to spot me i mean i obviously i'm six foot six so i mean i'm gonna be spotted but um you know, to have everyone, like I said, at the park this this year at Screen Break to come up to us, you know, and, and thank us. Some people, I'm not going to lie, this is how good the makeup team is. I don't recognize, uh, other than obviously uh, you and a few other people, but for the most part, I don't recognize a lot of people in character. And they come up and start talking to me. Um, I just found out that someone that was in City Under Siege is actually in, you know, your area as, as, uh, as, as Kagerton. Yep. And um, it, I I just found out I honestly just found that out right before we started the show too. So yeah. I feel extremely bad because I was talking to him. I, I feel I, I I'm gonna say this out loud. I'm gonna say this to the public. If I don't recognize you at haunt in your character, please don't get offended by that. It, it's more of I will still play along and be nice and we'll have a conversation about stuff. Um, cause I don't want it to be awkward, but it, it is you, the makeup artist, the, 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 you know, whatever masks you're wearing, whatever it is, are, are so good that I, you are unrecognizable when you are that character. And so I apologize to any scare actor out there that if you come across me, you start talking to me. And at first I don't know who you are. It, it just, just be, actually take that as a compliment because they, they, they've disguised you so well that I don't even know who you are. You know what's really funny? So over the summer, um, actually it was it was right after screen break ended. I did another event at Six Flags. And um I 
<laughs> so I was walking out of, of the, the backstage area with a coworker and she was like, yeah, just, you know, man, she, she mentioned something about Margot and I went, oh yeah, it's really fun playing her. And she looked at me, she went, what do you mean? I'm like, I, I, I play Margot. And she went, no, you don't. And I'm like, yes, I do. I play Margot. And she's like, what? <laughs> it was so funny. Because I think people expect Margot to be played by like a, like an actual like older woman. Oh, it's, and then, yeah, I mean, we had this conversation last year about you didn't yeah. even know the ingredients of making a margarita and you mm -hmm. coming up with that. I mean, to me, that is the best improv ever because it's like, okay, that may not be the ingredients to make a margarita, but that's the ingredients to make a margarita. Exactly. I, you know, I still, I just turned 21 in November, still haven't had alcohol. I think I'm one of the only people in Demon's Row that hasn't had alcohol in my life. And it, it, it's honestly... It doesn't taste good going down. Uh, that's what I've heard. But I'm like, not, you know, it, it is, it's pick or choose. You might find something you like one day, but to me, I'm, I'm a casual social drinker, so I don't drink very much. But uh, I will say, if you if you want something, a good starter, in my opinion, because it's, it's good on flavor too, uh, a Red's Apple or a um, Angry Orchard. Those are the two I bet, the best with flavor at least. But back to your point, I'm, I apologize. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. But like it's it's really again, and I'll say this ten gajillion times because this is what theater majors do. I'm a theater major, toss toss. Um when you do when you make a character, when you are a character and you become that character, the goal is to be different from yourself, mm -hmm. at the very least in some small way. And so what's fun for me is going to other haunts and seeing my friends, but not knowing it's them, you know, cause they're doing such a good job. Right. Like if you are portraying something so different from yourself and I believe it, kudos to you, man. Like I am not a 50 year old drunk woman. I am also not a 30 year old British woman who hates her husband. <laughs> I am neither of these things, but people don't know that. I it's, it's really fun to me. Cause I, I, I remember someone, someone once asked like, so, like, how many times have you gotten drunk? Because Margot seems really realistically drunk. And I go, you know, I've taken Benadryl and it knocked my ass out once. So, does that count? Does that count? <laughs> yeah, for real. Like, I I, I, I think that's the, that's what's so great about the world of improv and acting is is you are doing such a good job with it in the sense that you people people are asking you. If you're actually taking shots before work, it's like, do you realize if I were to take a shot before work, I'd probably get fired. <laughs> I would, I would, I would just, I can't, I would yeah. not be able to, I would have too bad anxiety because I have really bad anxiety. Right. I would not, I would not be able to. I'm I mean, good. I already imagine going out there because you guys are the starting point of the event. That's where everybody gets gathered up before the event starts. So I already imagine going out there as an own, it's already... It, it, that's already a lot of anxiety as it is, you know, and to add something else to that. I mean, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't be able to do it. I will say it's, it's really, really interesting for me because I'm realizing that, um, when I do theater and then you're on a stage, it's different than immersive theater where you're with people. Right. right. And that's, it's all improv. It's all immersive. Right. And it's really interesting as an actor to see like, how your mindset changes because i'm on stage i'm like i have to think about my lines i have to think about my blocking i have to think about my choreography my vocals whatever right when you're doing immersive entertainment how i do it at least i don't i don't know how everyone else does it but how i do immersive characters is i have a list okay. of basic things i know about the character and basic little little rules whatever right and then you have to jump off from that the amount of times that i have said something is margo mentioned it once and then it was gone to the wind. <laughs> like, it's just, I, I've gotten it down to, I I will say this, I am proud of myself. I have gotten down how to do interactions at screen breaks down to a science. And it's it's just so fun for me learning how to act in a new medium. Right. It's I I love it so much. I love acting. I love character work. And the character work I've done for Margot is some of the most fun that I've, I've been given the honor of doing. Yeah. I... I love Margarita. <laughs> I, I, you know, we saw you last weekend at the event. Now we're gonna, now we're gonna jump into a little bit of twenty twenty four things that you know my experience and everything. We got to see you at the event. Um, 
Margo tried to pull me into dance. Not much of a dancer. I was a little embarrassed. I'll be honest with you. I was a little shy. Um, I imagine I probably would have been in great hands, but I was just so shy and embarrassed that uh, I was like, I don't know if I want to do this because I don't know if I'm the best dancer. And then a lot of people are looking at me. However, I, I will say this about Margo. She was getting out there. She was showing the floor how it was done. Um, I remember catching some of it on camera. Um, I can't wait to look at the footage this week when I start editing that video. Um, but it is so incredible how much, and, and this goes for you guys entire as a zone, of how you guys just go out there and just, you don't let anything bother you. You guys just do you. You let the music take over and you guys just, you know, and then every now and then you jump out and have an interaction. Like, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you dancing? Why aren't, you know what I mean? It's like, and then someone else will come in and then start adding to that, you know, well, why aren't you out there doing this? Why are, you know, it's like, uh, but it's just so incredible to see you guys both go into that, especially with this year, going into that party zone, snapping mm -hmm. out of it, talking to a guest. And I can see what you mean by getting that kind of groove down of that balance of the performance with the improv, you yeah. know, you, you know, you're playing the script when you're going into the the dancing sequence of you interacting with characters dancing and whatnot and then you're playing the improv when you go interact with people and then other people come in so i mean it's the best of both worlds for you and, and it really i think that's the ultimate test of putting all of your acting chops in one to play off the script and then to improvise a little bit do you know how freeing it is to pretend to be a white woman at a party because <laughs> you don't have to look good at all when you dance i i can go out there and do like a this thing and people will be like yeah eat it up yeah, it's delicious, you know? <laughs> but um, fun fact, um, any time that any of us dance with each other, we don't practice it. We have never practiced it. We just kind of go, go hey. and vibe, huh? Yeah, it's great. The only things that I have practiced is when I do little, like, references to emotes. And I, I do, like, 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 certain little dances just because, I you know, it's, it's really fun, though, to to interact with um oh, my favorite thing to do is is if someone is interacting with a guest going over and then also interacting with them because the demons row cast is so stacked with talent it like is. i am so honored to be acting with the people i'm acting with everyone is so like okay to doink benny carlton weebs ned shards everyone is so good and everyone has their characters down to it Tea. and you can go into an interaction and you can talk to someone and everyone has how they feel about the other characters down like me and tequila we hate each other right or margo and the thirstinator it's I, like a weird mother son I got, dynamic. I got a comeback for you for tequila that you should use on the uh, final night do you know it already do you know that what i'm about to say right now it's a famous video out there and it's just you need to go up to her when she's having a conversation with someone act like you're sick you're like and just go up there and go i thought that was a lemon i didn't know it was tequila and just try to throw up all over it's a video i will send you the video it is one of the <laughs> funniest videos i've ever seen because this girl is legit drunk outside she goes i didn't know it was le he, she goes i thought it was lemon juice i didn't know it was tequila and she's like midway gagging like as she says tequila i was like <laughs> you need to probably try to recreate that somehow this final weekend to send off of like just kind of that's it i mean send it to me and i will do it oh my favorite my thing God. to do is references i love references so much i when i was so being a host uh you have like the games you do on stage and stuff right and over the summer for the fourth of july celebration we had trivia okay and i learned so much six flags trivia that now i can just make six flags references it's great <laughs> like I'll, I'll be out there and be like oh my gosh this reminds me of in 1993 when fright fest opened Okay, this reminds me of, of Mr. Six. Did you know Mr. Six? Do you remember him? I remember him. And I know how to do the Mr. Six dance now. Like, and I do it out I, in the zone. Don't play I, the Venga Buck and I'll do it. I got I to gotta add, I gotta add to the, the, the New York Boston-esque accent. I love it. I, what, what's the main, I, I, don't think, I don't know if I asked you that last year. What's the inspiration behind that? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> so, growing up, my mother was a, also an actress and my mother has this obsession with the boston red sox she has never lived in boston she's only been to boston once and but she's a fan of the red sox a fan. I, like, I don't know yeah. if we, i don't know if you and i would get along then because i'm a diehard dodger fan 
Listen, man, I don't know baseball. I don't know. But You're like my... swinging and a foul. She named our dogs Fenway after Fenway Park and Tessie as in the song that they sing. If you go in my house, there are pictures of Fenway Park. There's there's Red Sox merchandise everywhere. So she's okay? a, just a fan. Okay, I respect it. I, trust me, I know people who are fans of like the Philadelphia Eagles and live in California. I'm like, you've never been to Philadelphia. So growing up, my mother would do this thing. Where she'd be like, yo, do your laundry. And like stuff like that, right? And over time, I learned to just do it back. Be like, no, nah, I'm not going to do my laundry. It's your job. Um, Obviously, I wouldn't say that. Right. Uh, it, jokingly. Right. Well, there was one interaction we had recently where she's like, hey, you driving back to San Diego? Yeah, I'm driving back to San Diego. Oh, oh you going to take that tone with me? I am going to take that tone with you. How dare you? Y'all could be doing a a, 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 a two-woman show right here. I mean, yep. it's, it's it's amazing. Just like yeah. you guys can on it. Y'all need to apply for Universal Studios to be the window people. I was going to actually. I was going to over the summer, and then I got nervous. But um, I have faith in you. You got this. Oh, shucks. But, yeah, that's where I got I got the voice from, from my learning from my mom, who awesome. would do it all the time. And when we were doing auditions for Fri or for Spring Break originally, originally I was supposed to just be a host. I wasn't supposed to be in the zone. And they pulled me into the audition. Like, hey, do you want to audition for this as well? And I went, sure. I was supposed to be a swing host. So I was going to be on like one night out of all the Spring Break nights for the wow. first year. Yeah. And so they pulled me into the audition. They said, okay, this is the character. Go. And I was like, mother looking for her son? Great. Oh, my God. Like, you know, and that was the only reference I had. And they liked it. And it stuck. And now I'm using that voice for other, like one, I'm using a similar version of that voice for a different character in an audio drama I'm doing soon. Okay. They have voices all the way up here. And she has to talk like this and go, oh my gosh, I love my husband. Oh, you, and, so you high pitched it this time, huh? Yes, I did. I hit my all the way up here. And I, get to be, I get to be a nice person this time. <laughs> but yeah. Now you yeah, got a, now happened. you got a little angel voice talking to you and then you got the margarita devil voice talking to you. Don't drink and drive. No, I th you, you should you should drink, but maybe not drive. No, don't drink it all. Yeah. I mean, uh, just in my head, I'm already thinking the first thing that, that came to mind uh, with the, how you were doing that was, uh, for some reason, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. Yeah. I think I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think maybe because I just watched the Joker 2 trailer today, so it's like that's all in my head right now. I'm just like, oh, Lady Gaga, yeah. I'm like, let's do this. Musical, mm -hmm. I'm down. Like, everyone else is hating on it. I'm just like, this is going to be incredible. You could just give it a chance. I'm excited. Give it, it, a it chance. looks camp. And I Dude, love it. Joker, Lady Gaga, musical, well-known music at that, and it, the Joker. I mean, that's one of my favorite comic book villains of all time, so yeah. I'm for it. Todd Phillips, he did the Hangover trilogy. Now he's doing Joker. Like, it don't make yep. sense, but it makes sense. Yep. Um. So, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, you know, and, and, you know, going back to, uh, you know, 24 and 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 everything that um that you brought with the character this year i think uh, it was it was really fun um i i was seeing you interact with everyone i was seeing you have fun dancing um we got to go everywhere else uh and check out bloodborne we got to go check out the clowns you know that was a lot of fun i was super happy that um screen break this year had a slider show i think that's something that's very famous with the six flags brand um so that you know, that was really cool to see what they were able to accomplish with that again. More space for them, um, yeah. a lot of fun, and then you know, just overall the, the two mazes that were offered. Uh, we had a great night. Uh, other than it being a little chilly this spring, um, you know, I I, I I applaud you guys because there, they, you know, the, the weather for some reason has been very interesting. It wants to be hot during the week, and then it wants to rain and be cold all in the weekend. I'm like, can you just let us have one enjoyable weekend, not only for just the fans, but for the freaking monsters who got to go out there and, and be in the cold? Like, mm. man, I, I have to say, uh, and we talked about this before we went on the air, this easily topped last year. Um, they really listened to fans this year. They really gave the fans what they wanted. Um, it was cool to switch up not having Bolt 66 this year, although I did kind of miss it. Um, but to have Saw this year, I personally thought going into Saw that it was going to be like Saw Spring Break. I'm like, damn, okay, Jigsaw going to Spring Break, going to do a little traps. <laughs> but uh, how great would it have been if you would have taken a little aspect of like everybody – from around the park and put them inside the saw maze have margo in there and just you know have like a one night appearance of just having all these characters coming in and out to make mm -hmm. it that spring break vibe of just you guys just 
being in these traps, but it's not doing anything to you guys because you guys are already all dead. <laughs> I think Margo in the syringe pit, but instead of syringes, it's, it's a bunch of margarita glasses that are broken. All broken up, yeah. Yeah. That would be Looking for that last ingredient for the for the mix of the margarita. I, I don't know what it is. Okay. I, I I that's why I'm in here. It hurts and I'm in here, but I'm here. That, that you know that's what? it. It's fine. It's fine. You know why it's fine? Because I said so. I said so. <laughs> uh <laughs> man, I, I I mean just but you know, it was incredible. I mean, you know, the DJs were on point. Um Oh my god, the DJs. I oh my god. So I I worked very closely with the DJs over the summer. Um I know I know them very well. They're all so good. And my favorite, favorite thing about working with the DJs is you you know their individual styles. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I love the DJs so much. Shout out to Ricky Rocks, A1, and DJ Prince William. I love them so much. And I will tell them every single time how <laughs> they're just so, and they all bring like a unique, especially with Demon's Row. You get to have fun in Demon's Row. Right. Because it's Demon's Row. And it's just, Every one of them brings a unique vibe to the the zone that night, and it's just so I love it so much. Like when when DJ Prince yeah. William plays music, it's usually like like um, songs that you can vogue to, you know. So me and Tequila will be duck walking on the floor. <laughs> A one brings like classics, classics, and then Ricky Rocks is over there also bringing classics. It's just I I love them so much. They're all so good what they do. It, it you know I, I yeah and that and that's that's the key element to scream break right there is, is the music you know you the way i've i've looked at scream break was an ultimate and, th and i mean this in the best possible way ever but it, this was the ultimate parody to everything you used to see on mtv and everything back in the day yeah you know and i That's love that it's all the stereotypes that you would see all the exclusive clubs and parties that were going on this is our exclusive club this is our exclusive club yeah. for the haunt season right here it's really fun and I everyone's everyone's doing so good this year. The theming is just it's one of my favorite things about Screen Break is how everything's so individual, but it like there's something for everyone, you know. I have been I so Demon's Row is uh, everyone in Demon's Row died in 1993, if you get the reference. And uh, everyone died in 1993, but uh, my knowledge base is the 80s, right? So a lot of when I look at Demon's Row, I see a lot of the archetypes that you see in like The Breakfast Club or Ferris Bueller's Day Off, right? And it's fun for me because I feel like I'm walking into a John Hughes film or I'm walking into one of those party movies from the 90s, you know? And then you go to Bloodborne Hollow and it's like the gods and the the, the scary people. Like the, the Lost scary, Boys. You know? Yes, the Lost Boys. Exactly. You know? And then you go into Grave and it's just an absolute rave. Like it's there's something for everyone and that makes me personally happy is that people can see themselves represented it's i just, you don't gotta tell me about bloodborne i laz and i you know he the uh, owner personal friend of mine lets me yeah. in he gets me in the vip section you know he's even letting me drive the hearse a little bit you know i'm, oh. I'm, just, I'm just saying I, I got to drive the hearse a little bit may have dented it coming back but you know we don't talk we, 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 okay he just the rivalry the between demons row and, and bloodborne lives on oh <laughs> there it is uh but you know I, yeah i i really love the uh the you know, Laz was getting me to tell me that management was really cool on uh, on letting everyone have a say so in the playlist this year as well. And I think that, you know, I think that's really cool in the sense that, you know, you guys are going to be the ones listening to the music all night. So might as well throw in the music that you guys want to hear. Right. And yeah. that and that re and that kind of relates to that that party spring break vibe, no matter where you fit in. Like, I feel like with an event like Scream Break, there is a zone for everybody that, you know, yeah. you can party. If you want to go chill out in the vampire area, they got the kind of like gothic style music and a little bit of everything. Or if you want to go party with the DJs, chill with the clowns or chill with the demons. I mean, it's like, yeah. and you know, they, it, it's such a good layout. It's all just kind of one stretch of back and forth. And, you know, they do a really good job of of, of kind of making sure that they make sure everyone connects and, and vibes out and everyone fits in somewhere. That's what I really like about the event. On the point of management, they have been absolutely stellar this year in in giving us a lot of freedom, but also giving us something to work on right. um, or like work with, I should say, because um, they they have really, really been so supportive in the creative process for all of us. It's just it's I will sit I will stand by the fact that Screen Break 
is the best event I will ever work and have ever worked. It is so, it's creatively fulfilling. It's fun and you are supported. Like I've, I've been having, it, it's been, a, it's been, I'll say quarter. Cause you know, I'm in school. Mm-hmm. It's been a quarter for me, but being able to go to screen break and being with people who care about what they're creating and care about everybody. We all know each other's names and it's really, really sweet. And I, I just, I love going there every weekend. It's, I mean, place. you're, you're, you, you got the perfect travel arrangement. You know, you have places to stay when you need to, and that's awesome. You know, so it worked out for you as far as the only kind of money you're putting into really getting there is just on gas. Um, mm-hmm. But you have places to stay. Doors are open for you when you get into town, and 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 you know, coming back to to you know UC. I mean, you have a you have home bases, and and that I think that's what also makes it a lot more you know less stressful for you. You know, it's and having that, yeah, and having all those friends and and family to the, the back support of all of it. You know, it it, it 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 all those elements just make it make the trips the three hour trips worthwhile every year. I can only imagine uh you in the car with the playlist on getting yourself pumped and hyped up and i, I could see it I, I mean i do the same thing when i show up to haunts i have my music or i'll listen you know I, I during haunt season i build specific playlists of just heavy metal and music that i love that gets me hyped and and things that i think would be great for a haunt vibe and everything but you know we were talking about music earlier and it just plays a huge part in 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 everything haunt no matter what vibe of music you you could fit i guarantee you you could fit country somehow into into haunt you just do something oh. country related you can fit that vibe in i mean jordan pill made i got 5 on it a scary song yep so i mean if he can do that anything can be done trust me well also like i grew up in the south so country can be scary yeah like Appalachian horror is a real genre and it's it's southern horror in general is a real genre. I it doesn't get more country than the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh yeah. There it is right there. That is the heart of of country horror right there. Mhm. 50 but years yeah. in the making. Yeah. I I it's it's been it's been a really great season. And something that's also been really really nice for me too is um I had I had posted something I think it was either I think it was on my personal account when uh, Margo got sent out in a newsletter for Six Flags. And I was like, oh, this is this is crazy. I remember you sent me a message going like, hey, you deserve this. And you were just really sweet. And the people who support all of us and support the individuals, that has made my season as well. Because, again, I'm doing so much i've got my hand in so many different pools right now you know i'm making a show i'm voice acting in a show i'm doing screen break i'm i'm in five classes at a university right now but people like you and and everyone who watches this is it the support is it doesn't go unnoticed and it really does make a world of a difference um selfishly i'll admit that whenever people are like yeah you really made my night it makes me happy and it, 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 that's not selfish at all. That that's just the that's just the feeling of of you returning the feeling of like you're happy, I'm happy, it's all good. Like we, you know, we both are walking out of this night happy, you know. And you know, you you talk about um, you know, specifically, you know, I know I remember you last week about you know everything going on, um, but I, you know, and I've made it very clear to anyone that's ever come on the show, and I made it very clear with you uh, last week. If anyone at all does not feel comfortable or anything coming on the show uh, or, you know, and, and it doesn't even have to do with me. It's 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 to do with anything going on in the world, you know, your personal life, if something's affecting you or anything. Um, my number one rule on this show is anyone that comes on this show, I want them to feel as comfortable as possible. So much so that after it's all said and done, I want them to say things like, yeah, you know, that was fun. I would I'll, I'll do this again in a heartbeat. Um, there's a reason why at the end of every episode that I have a guest on, I, I always say you're welcome back anytime. The door is always open for you um, because there are going to be times, this being an example of, of people that I want to have back on the show that um, I had in the beginning. Your, your resume was like this. Now your resume is growing like this, and I get to follow your, your, your path. And, and career in the haunt world and um I, i've been fortunate enough not only to to do that with you but I've, I've gotten so many people on in the past who year after year or every other year or so i get to bring them back on the show 
their resume has gotten a little bit bigger, so I get to talk about what's been going on. You know, we picked up this show right where we left off the last time. You know, we we left off of, of us doing a show about spring or screen break last year, and we picked back up this show with Midsummer Scream, Fright Fest 30, and now Screen Break 2024. Mm-hmm. Um, you said something, uh, if, if you if I may uh, share it, between us of, of, of something about the show that was very similar to what AJ said about how I make people feel like people on this show rather than, you know, treat them like an advertisement or an item or something. Because, like I said, this show is, it, yeah, I, I want to get the talent aspect of you out there, um, anyone that's on this show, uh, but I also want to know and I want everyone else to know that you guys are human and I think that we've done an amazing job accomplishing that um I, I'm very honored and privileged and and grateful that we've gotten so much great feedback from from guests from fans about you know everything that we've done with this show and I uh I, I like I said I want to keep doing it until I can't do it no more um, mm. and I want to get to 300, 400, 500, a thousand episodes. Eventually there are so mm. many talented people in the world. And I think I've just scratched the surface. If not, maybe barely, barely put a little prick in my thumb of, mm. of the surface of that. And, and it's, it's great, but we, we continue to have people back on because like I said, with you, it's a, a great example of this is so, like I said, so much has happened since we talked to you in the last year. Um, and, and you've, you've truly, you've been through all the stages of haunt, you know, you've, you felt nervous, you felt, um, you know, happy, you felt sad, you felt, you felt, you felt, you felt all the emotions of haunt, you know, and, and it's, and it's going to be like that. But in the end of the day, we're all fans. Am's a fan. I'm a fan. You know, I create content, but the fact that I, create the stuff and you guys get to listen to my opinions and you guys want to listen to my opinions it really really makes me happy m does all this because she likes making people happy and it's just it's amazing to see what this community can accomplish when there's Mm -hmm. no bs in it there's no egos in it there's no any of this in it it's all it's it's a it's a we effort it's not a me effort so Let's keep that. Let's keep that high spirits going. I, I think uh, now is not the time to. I, if I were anybody, don't complain about any haunts. You know, there may be haunts that might be not good, but at least they're putting in an effort to put on something. We are mm-hmm. living in an era where we are being flooded with haunts. So instead of complaining about them, how about we just enjoy the time we're living in right now? Because it may be taken away with us like that. Mm-hmm. So let's enjoy it all because there's so much going on right now. Screen break is a perfect example. Last weekend is this weekend. M, um, you're incredible at the event. You're Everyone there is incredible. Makeup, everything, sound design, uh, everyone that's involved with Screen Break, uh, you guys help all bring it to life. Um, for your final weekend coming up, I, I want to ask you, what's, what's a few words you can say that kind of sums up and kind of shows your love for, for this year, for Screen Break 24? Uh, kind of giving it the final tip of the cap until next year. So as we were talking about, I didn't think Margo was going to be as popular as she was. Mm-hmm. Um, and going to Midsummer Scream, I remember realizing that. And I, I called one of my friends. I was like, hey, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to be able to recreate this and stuff. But with everything that all the kindness and love that I've been shown over this past year and with how excited people are when they come to the event or how excited they are when they 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 comment on posts and I'll see comments on posts on the Six Flags account being like I'm super excited for screen break add more weekends and stuff um the excitement that everyone has simply to be there is very fulfilling and really really ha- like it, it it's really nice to see um i know from personal experience when i go to an immersive experience or you know interactive entertainment i get nervous and i get shy and i you know i'm like oh people are looking at me people are like you know i I don't want to take too much time from people if specifically screen break i can't speak for other events but for screen break specifically if you're like if you want to talk to a character talk to a character 
have fun. The, the whole point with Screen Break is to have fun. We have fun. We want you to have fun. So don't be afraid to come to the event and have fun with us because we get happy when you're happy. And um, every, every, everyone who's, every single person who has come to Screen Break this year has been phenomenal. And I am really happy that everyone who came, came. And if you want to come to Screen Break next year, please do. Because it's genuinely one of my favorite events I've ever seen and been to. What's that? Uh, What's that one famous slogan? Um, oh, yeah. We scare because we care. We scare because we care, baby. That's I, it. I, I'd say the movie and the company, but I, I don't want to get sued. So we'll just keep it at that. <laughs> um, but no, I, I think what you guys do with Screen Break, uh, what anyone does with any haunt they're scaring at, uh, it, it's incredible. Um, we look forward to it every year. I'm so glad that we get to continue to talk about haunt, even in the off season, um, to have that experience with someone else to get to to share those moments with someone else you know it um anyone that comes on the show i mean i get to really see things through their eyes i get to see the other side of things that i don't see as a guest um so it is really cool and i've and i've gotten to see um a lot of different perspectives at a lot of different events and it is insane that uh of how everything works how everyone is different and how everyone um and goes about it and i'm looking forward to seeing what happens next year with 25 for screen break. But before we get to that uh, stop, you know, I imagine six flags will probably make a return at, at, at midsummer scream this year. Um, and, and before we get to spring break or screen break 25, we have to get to fright fest 24 um, or fright fest 31, whatever you want to call it. Um, that being said, you look at uh, the kind of uh, the, the closing of another yet chapter coming up with screen break what do you what's the future look like for you are you do, do you want to return to, to fright fest later this year and and reprise the winona role or do you want to try to go do something different like what is something that you know you're looking forward to for haunt season 2024 so sad moment um i'm a transfer i transferred from community college to university and the unfortunate thing about being a theater major is you got to do theater at your university so we will see what the fall holds. Either way, the Margot account will keep posting updates of what M, the human handler, is doing. Yeah. Um, if I'm not at Fright Fest this year as a character, I will be there as a guest. We're going to see what happens. But either way, I will be doing creative endeavors all throughout the year. I've got the audio drama company I'm a part of. And no matter what, no matter what happens, if there's a screen break, I'll be there. I was going to, then you just answered my last question. I'm like, this. so I was going to ask, is this the end of the character? But I don't think so. I think this is, this isn't the end. This is to be continued. Oh, yeah. No, my my rule with Screen Break is it doesn't matter what happens. I'm going to do Screen Break. Well, that it, is I think it's very flexible with the schedule, too. I mean, oh, to yeah. do just two nights a week, I think that really is, is a This big year specifically you. with the schedule has been heaven, heaven for me with with university um it's been really nice but again no matter what the schedule looks like next year for spring break i will be there awesome. i will i will be there i will make it a priority i don't care if i have to look at my dean and go listen i can't be another stage manager i have to do this thing don't question it just let me be purple on the weekends and we can move on <laughs> oh man I, I i love to hear it i i really do um i i can't wait uh I, you know a little bit of a bummer that if if Six Flags comes around, there is a potential chance you might not be involved with it. However, uh, I think that opens up doors for you to go experience other haunts. So uh, have fun. I know they do some stuff out in San Diego, too, that are pretty fun. Howl Scream by SeaWorld is out there. I heard some pretty good things about that. Um, there's some new up-and-coming haunts. I mean, Ghost Tours in Old Town San Diego. I mean, there's a lot of fun stuff to do during the haunt season. So... Uh, just keep your eyes and ears open to the to the interweb and to the streets because you never know the locals might know more than the internet does. So, um, and either way, actually, um, that's, the, not, that's not even a, that's not even a, the locals do know more than the internet does. Let's just say that that's just they might. Do you know, know do. like walking around the UC San Diego campus on Halloween, there's like 
40 gajillion ads for i actually i went to a haunt at balboa park and it was really good i heard about that one i've been wanting to make my way out there to go see it it was really scary yeah. i like i at one point i fell in the dirt it was like scrambling for my life to get away and i'm a scare actor yeah. and i was scared like it was really really good but either way if, if we if if the if the stars ever align, and I know we can't do it exactly with the Margot Rita character, but if we can do a new character that's kind of like a knockoff version of that, and take that character and react through mazes, I think that'd be some of the funniest content ever. Um, that just because it'd be like a character reacting to the maze, but secretly it's actually your reactions to the maze in character. And I think that you know, that's the fun part of improv right there. I'm, I'm the kind of actor that I could do. I think, no, genuinely, I used to do this thing where I would, I would play horror games as my D and D characters in character. And I would scream, Gen I would be scared of something, but it, I, this, the scream would come out in character. <laughs> we just the suspense mechanism be like, be in character right now, it's okay. <laughs> I remember playing Amnesia. Uh, oh Mich my god, I've seen so many footage of that game. I Okay. Terrible. I may not watch horror movies, but horror video games, that's my thing. Resident All right, Evil. Alice Madness Returns. Oh, thank you for the thumbs up, Mac. Um, Alice <laughs> Madness Returns, Amnesia, like the entire Amnesia, like, um. Oh, there's a really good game called In Sound Mind that's good. Like man. I'm a big Resident Evil guy. Yup, Resident, Resident Evil. Evil's, I, I've been playing all the remasters and I'm just falling mm -hmm. in love with all of them. And uh, it all it all kicked off with Seven Biohazard. That was revolutionary to that to that genre of that the was first the one person. that got me into Resident Evil was was Seven. It was Bio? But, oh my god, it scared the shit out of me. I play. I pulled an all nighter oh, to beat it, dude. I I couldn't put it down. Every every Resident Evil game since I. I don't stop playing until I beat it. Like I can't put the the stories are just so great. Yeah, but like the re like like my what so it's really fun. The show that I'm making, the audio drama, it is a sitcom with some horror elements, and it's okay. a you know I, I I'm an audio person, so it's gonna be like horror, horror scary, and doing haunt has helped me realize how I can make things scarier. So. That's a little little fun little tie in is that you know haunt can teach you how to do things in other fields. That's really fun. Indeed, indeed. Well, Em, mm -hmm. uh, for mm -hmm. those who want to keep up with the the Margarita Adventures, because I know you you yourself are getting busy. I know you're mm -hmm. probably just gonna have to hand off social to Margo pretty soon because you know I, I, she's a lot to keep up with at times. I know you were telling me this. It's 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 a it's a very strict and timely schedule with her, but. You know. She she demands her drinks at at, at at three 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 every day a.m. Oh by wow! The way. So you're so you're due to give her a drink in about an hour and a half. Man, I'm I gotta go to like the market. It's the whole thing. Yeah, but... I mean at least you're 21 now, so you don't have to you know. Can... Exactly, and that's what I've been saying. You yeah. know, and there's some good things that came out of this agreement. You know. Yeah, it was it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. for those who want to follow the. Uh, your characters works as far as Margarita and Winona go. Uh, where can they find you on social? Instagram, uh, the underscore Margo underscore Rita. That is the official account for my haunt stuff. Um, you'll see me occasionally post TikToks. If you find my TikTok, Godspeed Soldier, I'm a cosplayer. Um, <laughs> and yeah, that's where you can follow my haunt stuff. I uh, I actually gotten a chance over the, the, the um, since we haven't, I mean, every now and then we, we, talk a little bit on instagram a little if i put up a story you like it or if you put up a story i'll, I'll respond to something um and i got to see a couple of your cosplays outside of the haunt realm uh yeah. very talented stuff by the way um Thank you. i'm a huge fan of the cosplay community as far as um it goes back as far, as far back as when i was a kid uh when my dad would take me to comic con and stuff and and that was one of my most memorable things is seeing all these different people play my favorite superheroes growing up and thinking they were the real thing and everything but you know as a kid you have an imagination. You just see all these superheroes. You're just blown away, you know. And yeah. I, I love That's... cosplaying. I mean, people. Even if I don't know it, I just love to see the creativity behind it. I'm like, you made that. You designed that. This is all you. I'm like, this is awesome. Well, what's really crazy is that my cosplays actually got me on the board of directors for the theater company because I am now the character designer and the costume designer and the makeup artist for that company. So. That's that's a cool Remember thing. Remember, every now and then, just take a breath of fresh air. Oh, buddy, listen, I, I'm having a great time. I get to do all this creative stuff. I spent from like 2020 to 2022 doing very little things, just like Screen Break and Fright, or no, just Fright Fest because Screen Break started in 2023. Right. And then Screen Break hit and my life 
exploded and I could not be more happy. I'm, I'm doing great. so much. Great. I'm so happy. It's only a matter yeah. of time before we see you on on a TV show or something. It's it's oh, probably shucks. it's coming soon, man. You got to you got to <laughs> hold off for that. But uh Em, I want to thank you for your time. I know it's it's like super freaking late for both of us, but um you know, college, I know college you probably don't sleep much. You're lucky if you get that that few hours of sleep just to kind of nap. But uh, man, I got three hours of sleep last night and then I had to go to math and it's baby math because I'm not good at math. <laughs> hey, uh, you, we're, we're all we, when you're in the hot community, you're on the what I like to call the Einstein um, sleep schedule where you only get if you're lucky to get 10 minutes of sleep a day, you do it. Um, hey, you know what? We're grateful. We're grateful for that 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, the bags under my eyes say it all. I've, I've put in my uh, my uh, my dues and stuff, but. Uh, I want to thank you again for being on the show, for accepting the invitation again. Um, it was it was a thank blast you for to catch up. Me. Of course, anytime. You know, you're welcome back anytime. Um, Screen Break finishes its final weekend this weekend, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as of this recording, as of this release date. Um, so if you guys have not get, gotten a chance to see it, uh, check it out before it ends. Uh, you can watch it all on YouTube and everything, and that's awesome. That's great, but nothing lives to actually seeing it with your own two eyes. Um, that I'm being Margo. and seeing Margot, yeah, there's so many characters to go and, and visit. Uh, visit them before they have to go to rest again for another yes. year season. Um, we're dying, we're waiting to see you. We're dying. All the, they're all dying to wait to see you. Uh, if you meet Margot, she'll tell you her her special uh, margarita recipe. Uh, you can try it. Do not. I, I do not suggest. Don't try it at home. Um, please don't, please don't please try don't. it at home. Let uh, for uh, let the professionals handle it. Uh, and and Margot is a professional. Hey, only only we'll, one we'll, more. We'll put professional in parentheses because she's a self-proclaimed professional, and that's good enough for me. She's got a PhD in Margot Rita isms. I she she's doing stuff something right, you know. Yeah, she framed it on our wall. Oh and, wow, uh, it's 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 a whole thing. She's I think she's trying to rub a degree in your face, and because she, she knows you're working on yours, and she knows that you have a, a big plate of it, and she's just like, look, at I already got mine. It's like there's an age gap. That's not fair. It's like, man, I'm 21. You're 50 plus what 30 years since you've been dead like come on man <laughs> you're 80 but you still look like you're 50 and it, it, it doesn't make sense here but uh regardless yeah go see screen break and if you miss it this year be sure to go see it next year i i, I hope it comes back next year um i i think with how it was a success this year they're gonna probably make this a yearly thing so uh look forward to that go visit uh fright fest all the amazing uh, monsters at fright fest we're not paid by the way this isn't a sponsorship we just we're showing our love and appreciate for, for the event m uh, a great uh addition to the team and uh, i love seeing you come out every every time we, we're there and, and you do such an amazing job so keep up the great work we can't wait to see uh what's next for you and uh yeah uh with all that being said i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode if you guys did smash that like button hit that subscribe button with that bell notification be aware Every time we put up a new video, all of our social medias are linked down in the description. So go follow us on all of our socials. That's how you stay all up to date as to what's going on with the Knights of Horror. Uh, until then, we will see you next week for another Scream Break Takeover. And on Friday for our Scream Break, uh, uh, our Scream Break 2024 vlog. Stay tuned. We'll see you guys real soon. Stay spooky. <laughs>